As the case tells it, Morphe describes itself as a company that likes to blend the rules, and that is exactly what they have done. It is against the law to call pressed pigments that contain those dyes that are not safe in the immediate eye area eyeshadows. You're not allowed to use them on the eyes, according to the FDA, not because they will burn your eyes or not because they will hurt you or make you blind or anything, but because they cause staining and they consider staining to be dyeing your skin because essentially it is that pigment dyeing your skin even if it does come off. So at least one of these, which is the shade Skip that I showed you, that hot pink shade, I believe does contain some of those dyes. It is a pressed pigment and they can stain the skin. This is gonna be a lot. I've been saying for years now that Morphe was gonna be involved in a class action lawsuit and uh, now they are. So if you wanna find out who is involved and what palettes are mentioned, please stay tuned to this video. There's so much drama going on right now. Hey, what is up all my social climbing friends? It's Dustin and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're gonna be going over an article that is on classaction.org that covers the class action lawsuit that has been filed against Morphe. Now, if you've been a follower of mine for a very long time, I've made numerous videos on Morphe. I've made videos about Jaclyn Hill talking about Morphe. I've made videos about Jeffree Star talking about Morphe, James Charles, Nikita. We've covered Morphe pretty much every angle here on this channel, and the overwhelming consensus is that Morphe is a shady company, and now, you know what, it's finally coming back to bite them. It really couldn't happen to a nicer group of people. But a lawsuit was filed against Morphe on April the 1st, so let's talk about it. There is an article that I will be reading you guys from classaction.org. It does have the document attached, so I'm gonna be linking it in the description box of this video, as well as a way to reach out to the attorneys that are handling this case if you are involved in this or if you wanna be involved in this. Pretty much, if you remember what happened to Cody Rance, if any of that ever happened to you, if there was ever an issue with you using the pressed pigments, having like eye irritation or anything like that, this class action lawsuit is probably going to be for you. What's crazy about it is a couple years ago, all you heard was like buzzwords like pressed pigment, pressed pigment, pressed pigment. Morphe and a whole bunch of other brands had all these warnings about pressed pigments and the warnings that they put on here were really not adequate for a product that really is not supposed to go near your eyes. So that's that's what this lawsuit is about. So let's just jump into it because it's a lot. It's a lot of reading. I feel like I can give really good commentary and reactions to this article because I know things. I know the history of Morphe. I know all this different shit that Morphe's been involved in. So I think it'll make a really good video. So if you're here for that, stay tuned. Let's just jump into it. As I said before, this will be linked in the description box. It is on classaction.org. One of my lovely followers named Christina sent it to me. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I did not know that this was a thing. Like I heard rumors that this was happening, but I wasn't sure because I couldn't find anything, but apparently this was filed on April the 1st. And this article was written on April 25th, but it says inherently disingenuous Morphe makeup contains color additives unapproved for use around eyes, class action alleges. A proposed class action claims that the makeup company Morphe LLC has failed to warn customers that some of its cosmetics products are not safe for use near the eyes as intended. I think she did say that a few of these are pressed pigments. Um, which it's been like a real, I'm not really going into this with like much of a plan, am I? Okay, well it's happening already, so. More and more brands have been doing like pressed pigments um, as opposed to just like plain, plain old eyeshadows. Um, and they are like really beautiful and they have like lots of pigmentation and stuff like that. Some pressed pigments though aren't actually like eye safe, but I don't see any kind of like, I don't see anything about it. So I'm assuming it's all now the first thing that I can think of when this comes up is Cody Rance. You guys check out this video detailing everything. I'm pretty sure this is exactly what they're talking about. I want to make it very clear. The hives that I'm getting on my eyes are not from my makeup remover or base. I've used both of the products for years. Never had hives from them. I use them literally every day. I got a sister sleigh wherever I go. But James did not warn me about the staining. He didn't tell any of us. I watched all his promotions on the palette. He didn't say that it would look like I have eyeshadow on still after I tried to remove it. I can safely say you should skip using the color skip. People are trying to say because it's a pressed pigment that I should know that pressed pigments can stain. None of the others did this. Explain that. Mr. Charles, I don't care what formula it has, but you should never, 
ever, ever try to promote a product that does this to another human being. The 52 page case filed on April 1st in California alleges that some of Morphe's eyeshadow palettes, eyeliners and color fix 24 hour cream color products contain inherently dangerous color additives that the US Food and Drug Administration FDA has deemed unsuitable and unapproved for cosmetic use near a person's eye. Now what's really crazy about this and it's in the actual lawsuit, I don't know if the article touches on this because I haven't read the full article, I have read like the full lawsuit. It's pretty much about how all these YouTubers are deceptive and they told people how to use this product in a way that they weren't really supposed to be using this product. Do you guys remember when James Charles released the Morphe X palette and how he told everybody that the pressed pigments work different? Well, if you don't, here's a refresher. Now, I do want to touch on the matte shades and some of these formulas behind them because most of the mattes in this palette are considered pressed pigments and not typical eyeshadows. Now, what does that mean? I didn't know until very recently when I was formulating this with Morphe, but now I do, so I want to share it with you guys. The ingredients in pressed pigments are just slightly different than eyeshadows and they are actually exactly what their name says. It is literally just the actual color pigment pressed right into a pan ready for you to use, whereas an eyeshadow has a lot of other stuff mixed in it as well to make it perform really beautifully. Now, that being said, by doing pressed pigments, it allows you to make the most vibrant, true to color product ever, and I am so incredibly proud of these. As an artist, I will say straight up to you guys, some of these pressed pigments are a little bit harder to work with just because you have to use slightly different techniques, but once you figure them out, they are so incredibly beautiful, and I know that you guys are gonna fall in love with them. So, my advice to you, I personally found that packing on the pressed pigments with a flat brush works the absolute best to get maximum color payoff and to make sure all the shadows stay in place. And as well, I always use shape tape or my concealer as an eyelid primer before doing any eyeshadow. For the pressed pigments, I would actually not recommend this. The lawsuit alleges that the application of the Morphe Cosmetics at issue to a person's eye area can cause severe eye irritation, skin discoloration, and staining, rashes, allergic reactions, and other painful, embarrassing conditions that can reportedly last days. Now, you guys just saw the clip of Cody Rance. That was a big thing when the Morphe palette was released with James Charles. There was a whole bunch of drama surrounding that and a lot of people talking about how it irritated their eyes. Hell, I even remember briefly, there was like Morphe palettes that had like this black pigment in them that were allegedly like combusting. If I can find anything about that, I'll put it in here, but I remember that being a thing. If you guys remember that, let me know in the comments down below. Per the case, Morphe has nevertheless promoted an advertise these products for use in the eye area without warning consumers of the known dangers of applying the makeup as advertised. Defendants actively instructed and encouraged consumers, including children, to use the products in a manner which defendants knew or should have known was inherently dangerous and unlawful. The lawsuit scathes. This goes back to what we were just talking about, how these beauty influencers that came out with these palettes were telling people how to use these products in a way that they were not supposed to be using these products. According to the suit, anyone who purchased the Morphe products at issue was injured financially in that they bought makeup they believed was safe and received instead items that were unreasonably dangerous and defective. We've been telling you guys forever that Morphe is a shady company. Morphe is a shady brand. It's a cheap bottom of the barrel brand. They always hook up with these influencers that have a whole bunch of followers that are either new to the scene or naive to what these people are going to be selling them. And then they turn around and they make these palettes and they sell people shit. They sell people literal pieces of shit products. According to the case, Morphe refers to some of its eyeshadow palettes as artistry palettes or press pigments. In order to avoid responsibility for marketing the makeup as eyeshadow, the suit claims the use of these euphemisms is confusing and dangerous given pressed pigments are essentially indistinguishable from eyeshadow and the only reasonable use for them is for cosmetic application to the eye area. Moreover, the lawsuit contends that Morphe has encouraged consumers to use this product at issue near the eyes by including it in its advertising pics of models wearing the cosmetics as eye makeup included in the complaint are the following images which respectively purport to depict Morphe advertisements for the Color Fix 24 Hour Cream, Color Neons in the shade UFO, Neon Yellow, and Color Fix 24 Color Mattes in the shade Valentine, Bright Pink, even though these two shades allegedly contain harmful color additives. I don't know why this is news to people. I don't know why anybody would be shocked by this, but literally we've been saying this before Cody Rants, after Cody Rants, during Cody Rants, and now years later after Cody Rants. Morphe has also specifically directed consumers to apply the affected products to the eye area and instructions and product tutorials on its website and social media accounts. <laughs> 
the class alleges. I wanted you to, for the price of one shade, be able to do lots of things with it. So go crazy. Color Fix is your one and done, do everything dream product. Color Fix is a liquid pigment that can be used anywhere on the face or body. The lawsuit argues that rather than provide a conspicuous warning about the alleged dangers of its products, Morphe instead includes online for some items vague language and inconsistent statements such as caution, pressed pigments not intended for use in the eye area. These purported disclaimers, the suit says, fall far short of properly warning potential consumers of risks they could face should they apply the products to the eye area. Defendants purported the disclaimer does nothing to assist consumer in understanding the known risk of using Morphe eye makeup, nor does it suggest that any known dangers exist, the complaint states. So these people are basically calling Morphe liars without calling them liars, but still calling them liars because Morphe and the whole form a team are liars. Per the suit, customers can go through the entire purchase process on Morphe's website for the products at issue without ever being shown the hidden disclaimer, which according to the case appears in small, unbolded font buried within 30 lines of text. And it does, even if you purchase this palette from Ulta, it's still, you like, you have to click on a whole bunch of different things and it tells you a whole bunch of different shit. And it'll be really interesting to see if this it has any kind of effect on other brands, if they're gonna get lawsuits too, because if you know anything about Jeffree Star, a lot of his pigments are pressed pigments. He's used kind of the same disclaimer in the past as well. So it'll be really interesting to see if he has any kind of kickback or if people go after him after this. The case says Morphe's product packaging similarly contains no warning or disclaimer to put customers on notice of the risk of applying the makeup near their eyes. On the back of the Morphe X Sour Patch Kids Sour Then the Sweet palette, for example, Morphe categorizes the individual colors as either eyeshadow or pressed pigment and includes next to the pressed pigment list a tiny symbol of an eye with a line through it according to the case. The suit argues that the symbol fails in every aspect to properly warn customers about the known hazards of using the makeup near their eyes. As the case tells it, Morphe describes itself as a company that likes to blend the rules and that is exactly what they have done. Now I'll tell you what, that's great marketing right there. <laughs> the fact that they use blend the rules as their slogan only to turn around and have that quoted in a lawsuit against them, that is epic. Consumers allege Morphe makeup is unfit for intended use. According to the suit, the presence of certain color additives in the Morphe makeup renders the products unsafe for their intended use, as application of the makeup to a person's eye area can cause pain, redness, itching, skin irritation, rashes, and skin staining. One of the plaintiffs, a Rodeo, California resident, says she bought several Morphe products for herself and her minor child, who the suit says experienced severe eye irritation that required medical attention. Another plaintiff and San Diego resident claims to have experienced skin staining after using Morphe eyeshadow. The plaintiff repeatedly scrubbed her eyelids and eye area with makeup remover, but it did not remove the stains or discolorations the products caused. When the plaintiff woke up the following morning, her eyelids and general eye area were still stained and inflamed as a result of using Morphe's eye makeup. The third plaintiff, a Wahiwa, Hawaii resident, also claims to have experienced skin staining as a result of Morphe products, including the Morphe 350, Morphe 35M, Morphe 35W, Morphe 9C, and Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow palette. The plaintiffs each allege that when they purchased the Morphe products, they were unaware of any warnings or disclaimers that the makeup contained harmful color additives that were unsafe for application on the eye area. Now here's where all the products are actually mentioned that are included in this suit. And it's quite a bit of products, you guys, like it's a lot. So I'll name them all for you and maybe you have them. I know that if you follow me, you might have this James Charles palette and you might have the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette, but there's a lot here. I'll read them off really quickly for you. James Charles palette, Morphe X Sour Patch Kids palette, 35T Sweet tea palette. Now you guys, there is a lot here. I'm not going to read all of these because I would be here literally forever. But basically, if you have bought a Morphe product, I highly suggest that you go to the description box of this video and click on this article and read and see if you can get reimbursed for your palette because there are, there are a lot of products on here, like a lot. And the ones that stick out to me, uh, there's a Madison Beer palette, the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette, the James Charles palette, the Mickey and Friends Jealous palette, the Pretty and Peach palette, a lot of people bought that, the 18F Talking Flirty Artistry palette, I've heard a lot of people talk of that, the Morphe X Lisa Frank 35B Lisa Frank Artistry palette. There's so many different products that they've launched that are included in this that it's insane. Which color additives does the case say the makeup contains? The case claims that the Morphe products mentioned on this page are inherently dangerous because they contain the following color additives banned by the FDA for use in the eye area. Now, I don't want to sound like a crazy person, so again, if you want to know the specifics, I highly suggest you go and click on the article and read it for yourself. Who was covered by the lawsuit? The lawsuit looks to cover U.S. residents who purchased 
the Morphe makeup mentioned on this page during the maximum period permitted by law. So basically from my understanding what that means is that there is a statute of limitations but I don't think any of that is going to be over and if you have bought a Morphe product I highly suggest that you reach out to the attorneys that are mentioned in the description box of this video. How do I join the lawsuit? There's usually nothing you need to do to join or be considered part of a proposed class action when it's first filed. If the case moves forward and settles, that's when those who are affected by the case, i.e. the class members, would receive notice of the settlement with instructions on how to file a claim for their share and information on their legal rights. It often takes months or even years for a lawsuit to be resolved. In the meantime, one of the best things you can do is stay informed. Check back on this page for updates or get class action news sent straight to your inbox by signing up for classaction.org's free week newsletter and at the bottom it does have the actual like legal document attached where the lawsuit was filed if you guys are interested in checking that out I implore you to really do that if you have bought a Morphe product because Morphe has gotten away with things for so freaking long and all I can remember is the Jen Loves video where she like talks about the change in the Morphe formula and how Jacqueline actually said that she changed the formula like I'm having flashbacks of like 2020 2018 all this different crap I also want you to note the addition of Carmine as a pigment in the new version versus the 2017 version because I know some people have sensitivities to carmine or just don't believe in using carmine on their eyes because it is made from a bug uh, and some people just don't like putting bugs on their eyes and they just don't use carmine. Uh, it has been an ingredient that's been in cosmetics for maybe even thousands of years. I mean, <laughs> very, very long time they've crushed carmine in order to use as a pigment on the face. Uh, so, I mean, it's unless you're allergic to it or you're grossed out by it. I use it all the time and I don't have a problem with it. That, let's just say that. Because Morphe has just been a piece of shit for that long and it's finally, finally coming back to them. But you guys, please let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. What do you think of this lawsuit? Did you or someone you know like suffer damages from buying a Morphe product and it affecting your like eye areas because you weren't supposed to put it there? Will you continue to buy Morphe products? Let me know all that down below. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you all in my next video. <laughs> Bye guys. Yeah.